Hi, welcome to today's QGIS tutorial lesson 4. In this video, we will learn how to label features in QGIS in QGIS 3.14. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so so that you can get a notification when I upload the next lesson. Let's get started. Labels can be added on a added to a map to show any information about object can be added to show any information. These labels rely on attribute data of a layer or their content. They rely on the attribute data. Labels are a good way of communicating information. So with labels, we'll be able to do better, to have a better way of communicating information. This can make your map a lot more informative and stylish. So in this exercise, we're going to learn how to add labels to vector layers, that is the points, the lines and the polygons. In lesson two, we had learned how to download data from Eva GIS and Ocha. And that is there. We had actually downloaded the Italy data, Nigerian data, and Uganda data. So today we are going to use uh, one of the data to see how we can label our features better and be able to look at the information that is in our data better. So First things first, we we'll load the vector layers. So to add vector layers, you come to layer. We are going to add a layer. We're going to add vector layers. Then we'll browse for where the vector layers are. We had saved them in our GIS folder. Remember, data folder of for GIS. So I'm going to load the Italy admin data. I'm going to select all the administrative boundaries of Italy. I'm going to add into my QGIS. And you can see they have already loaded. Then I'm also going to add the line feature which is, which is the italy road and it has been added into my qgis then i'm also going to add the point data which is the health shape files the health sites once i have added the, my my three types of uh, vector layers i'll click on close now i have all my three vector layers added onto my qgis so we will start with how to label the polygons so i will just uncheck the lines and the points now i remain with three with the four polygons all these are administrative units of italy from the highest administration to the lowest administration you can see this is the highest administration which is the all the first one is the whole of italy when i uncheck italy is now subdivided into further uh, regions when i uncheck admin one you'll see the admin one is now further sub italy is now sub subdivided into more regions when i uncheck now the regions even become much much smaller so these are the most smallest administrative units of italy so for this for our case we're going to just use uh, to start by uh, our uh, labeling admin one so i'll click on admin one zoom to layer you remember how to use the tools you can either zoom to layer from here or if it has moved to the other side you can just click on zoom to full now, now we are learning how to use almost every tab in our qgis tool, tool in, the, in our in our toolbar so we, the first thing you need to, to know is learn about the attribute table. What, how can you get the data that is within this layer? This is how you get it. You right click on the layer and then you scroll down to open attribute table. The attribute table actually contains all the information that this layer carries. So I'll open the attribute table and now you will see a small table that will appear with all the information with rows and columns. So each and every row represents a region like for example if i select this second row and then i minimize you can see a region has been selected here i'll go back to attribute table again and you can see i can even select seven multiple regions by holding the shift and selecting them and you will see seven region have been selected so we want to label all these regions that have been all these regions using a certain unique identifier so which is when you look at it you can see 
uh, ID zero, I saw name zero, ID one, name one, type one. No, there's so many uh, uh, rows and so many columns. So we want to name uh, name name according to this column here, which is name one, because you can see they have different names, and I, I assume these are the names of maybe the different regions, that, the, the twenty regions that are within Italy. So I'm going to label it using name one. So you make sure that you look at that column name one in, and put it in, somewhere in the in the back of your mind that you're going to label it using name one. Then we come to the layer again. Right click on the layer. Now we are going to the properties of the layer. So you select properties. Then this uh, box appears and this box has information, source, symbology, labels, mask, 3D view diagrams, fields, and all and so many more information. So what we are interested in currently is just the labels. So I select labels. So we want to labels and currently the layer has no labels. So we are going to select the drop down and select single labels. Then what value are we going to use to name our our features in the map? We are going to select the drop down and look for name one. Remember name one? You had put it somewhere at the back of your mind. So name one. Now the text of name one will appear like this. Uh, it, it will be black in color. But we want to do some little bit of edit and click on text. And we want to do some little bit of uh, color changing. And you see when you click on text, these uh, tools appear here. So there is the font. So you can select the font that you want. I'm going to leave it that, like that. Then you can select which style is it regular or bold do you want them to be bold or regular then do you want to underline them then what is the size the size is 10 by default so you can change it to any other value you want i will not change it right now then the color i want to change the color so i'll select the color and i, I i'll select the color that i want for the levels and i'll select that nice pink color and then i will just click apply and see what happens to my levels just move it and you can see it has actually labeled all my regions uh, the way I wanted it to label. So I can go back now and do some more edits. So I don't, I no longer want a regular, I want a bold one. I'll select bold, then I click on apply first, then I look at them. Are they now bold? Yes, they're bold. So I'll go back again and I want to put some more style to it. So I'll remove the boldness first and let it be regular. Then I will come. Under formatting, I'll not change anything. Maybe I'll just say, uh, maybe I want them to be all uppercase. And if you see, it changes here. So what, whatever changes you make, change here. And it guides you to, on what is going to, how, how your labels are going to appear. So then I'll go to the buffer. I can actually draw a buffer around. And you can see currently, it's just a white buffer. So I can change the color here. Instead of that white buffer, I can put maybe say a yellow buffer and see what happens. You can see. Now it becomes a yellow buffer, the back, the background. Now you can even apply a mask. You can even uh, add a background to it. And you can see there's very many backgrounds. You can actually add a, a rectangular one. Then let's see how it looks like. I click on apply. You can see a rectangular uh, background has been added. I can change it to square. And it actually changes but that is not a good way of actually uh, doing that so i can change it to ellipse and you can see it changes that now the the labels to ellipse so but i won't i want to draw a background here for now so i'll uncheck that then we go to shadow you can actually draw drop a shadow to your background you can do callouts then placement this is now also an important uh an important part so what do you where do you want our labels to be placed we want them to be placed maybe say around the centroid around the center of the polygon or you can put them free or outside polygon or inside the perimeter or using the perimeter so let's start by centroid then we're going to force the point inside the polygon so i'll try that right and you can see it actually tries to force the 
label inside the polygon but some are actually overlapping outside so we need to make also some changes i'll go back to properties still properties and then i will maybe say a distance or maybe just uh free let's look at free then i click on apply and you see it actually labels them freely on the map without any restriction so we can also do the same thing again uh, using perimeter curve click on apply and you can see they'll actually follow the perimeter and some of them actually even disappear from view that is not also a good way of labeling now the, the polygons you can say outside polygon click apply you can see it will actually try to put all my labels outside the polygon so you can actually that is how you can actually uh, load uh, labels in polygons now let's go now to the next the next uh, vector layer which is the, the lines so I'll uncheck the polygons then I'll check the lines which are the roads and you can see there are very very many roads in Italy so I'm going to zoom to just a certain region the Italy let me just maybe select Sicily so we'll look at our attribute table to see how they have been labeled and currently there are no names for this road but we just want to learn how to use the label feature so we are going to label it using maybe say let's just use the road because when i look at it oh there, there are trails and roads so i just want to see how actually we're going to label this so we're going to we're going to look at this column here which is f code the f code So we are labeling them using the F code. We'll do the same thing again for this layer. We will go to properties. We're still under labels. Then we'll say single labels because then we, we, we haven't actually labeled them. Then we'll select the F code. Then you're going to leave it at that color first. You, you, you see, actually, it's almost the same, but there's just, just some little bit of slight uh, difference in this interface here. So go to text we select the text that we want to how we want to write the text so maybe i'll put red then i can draw a buffer a white buffer around then uh, maybe say go to placement now this is where now we, we, we change some things you remember the other one was giving you centroids and all that but this one is telling you parallel count or horizontal so we are going to label the uh, them parallel first see what happens apply okay and you can see has just labeled the different roads let me just change something for the roads here very quickly we'll learn how to do this later in the later the later class so i'm going to and now you can see the roads much better but we want to do some little bit of adjustments on the roads so I will go to labels and placement so the first type of placement was above line and it was parallel let's try this let's put it curved and then instead of above line let's put it on the line and check above line and then just scroll down and say apply okay you can see now the labels have been they have been labeled on the line which is the road and they actually look much better you can actually change the road the, the, the you can actually even put a, a background or let's say a background row background angular angular background Because we had selected a white buffer actually not appearing so i'll remove the draw buffer okay.
oh maybe if i take the italy admin talk much more better the last layer that we're going to learn how to label is the point layer so i'm going to uncheck the rods and check the health health sites so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to open the attribute table so we'll right click open attribute table to see the kind of information that is in this uh, layer so we'll see there are amenities dispensing healthcare and name of the, of the facility so how do you want to label our facilities we want to label them using the name of the facility or name f so we're going to close the attribute table go to properties then under label i come to no labels so single labels again and we can pretty much do the same thing label with the facility name then under the text we can change the color maybe say we want a red color for the facilities then we can put so we can put a buffer and change the color to a maybe say a light green color and you click on apply you can also change the opacity here so that the, the, you can reduce the opacity and increase, increase the opacity you see what happens here so then next we're going to say uh, around the point and then we're just going to click on apply see what happens you can actually edit here and change so many things you can maybe put an a distance offset distance of maybe say one one or two depending on how you want to just customize your your, your labels you can even change the type of text you can change it to maybe say a different kind of uh, text format it changes here so i'm going to just click apply okay and that is basically it that is how we actually load we actually label uh, points lines and polygons in qgis so i'm going to turn on all the layers i've actually labeled look at how everything looks like so how you label your layers is determined by the scale of your map and the level of detail in your map you can define the rules on how you want to use your labels if you found this video useful and you want to learn more on qgis subscribe to my channel hit the bell icon and get notified when my next video is uploaded don't forget to hit the like button see you in the next video